Welcome back to well, welcome to a new anime review series. This is our review. This is one. This is basically the summary review for the series Blue Exorcist. Yep, this one I'm calling it Part One A. Why? Because this is the because the first 17 episodes are all canon. The last eight episodes of season one of the show are all filler. Yep, filler. Yeah, we'll talk about my final thoughts season one. Like, but next, finish the next eight episodes. Mm -hmm. This series was adapted from the manga by a person by the name of Katsu Katito. K Katsui K Kato. That's how you pronounce the person's name. Now, there are many characters make debut over the course of these first 70 episodes. First of which, you have the main character, Rin Akamaru, who is voiced in the dub by Bruce Ka Peppercook. Yeah, if you hear this guy's voice, yep, it's the same guy who voices Aaron from Attack on Titan. And Meliolas from Seven Daily Sins. Only a few series have seen him in. And his brother, Yukio, who is also called Yuki by one other person, is voiced in the dub by the ever-awesome Johnny Ambosh. This is by far the sixth series I've heard him in. Because first was Naruto, actually, first was Naruto, Naruto the original Naruto series, Shippuden, then Bleach, Sailor Moon Crystal, Jordan of Avengers, and now this series. Six series I've heard this guy in. At least this time he's not voicing a freaking cat. That goes to Stephanie Steve, voices Kira of this adorable little cat. Yeah, for her, it's kind of also the six series I've heard her in. Yep. Which is awesome. Now we also have the main character's love interest named Shimmy. This beautiful woman who has a thing for his brother, but <laughs> that gets straightened out later on in the series. In case you wonder how long the series has gone for, 112 chapters, and it's published monthly, kind of like Black Butler. You have Shimmy Marara, who's voiced by Christine Marie Camaros. I'm not only familiar with her. Yep, I'm not familiar with her. You have Reggie Sixogaro, who is voiced by the awesome Kyle Herbert. Mm -hmm. Then we have Rina Saima, who is voiced by Brian Babacook, Bean Cook. Which, when I heard this particular person, okay, yeah, this is not the same person. Though this, this one was also in Beach. Voices Yamakachi. Yeah, the the guy who's kind of like the Aaron boy from, from Squad 4, who's basically sort of seat 7. Yep. That one who basically appears on his sword with him and just feel like Aaron. This is Kalamaru, who is voiced by Miki Maran. In case you hear this actor's voice, yep, it's the same one who is from Digimon. Yep. The same person. This is by far the second series I've heard this voice actress in. And she's very good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Imiko. You have I Izumo, who is basically a woman with these tiny eyebrows. I look at this character, I'm like, did Ear Check for My Hair Academia show up here? Yeah, it's not the only character. S Saizumi. Yeah, yeah, the thing with this character is very cheerful, rosy cheeks. Well, even though she's a blonde. If she's a blonde hair, it's like Otaku from My Hero Academia. You have basically two characters, horrible spitting images of characters from another series I, I, I review. It's just by sheer coincidence. The only difference is My Hero Academia started back in 20... I believe it's 2014 this series started. This manga started back in 2009. Maybe the right My Hero Academia ripped through them. Yep. Probably did. Yeah, the awesome... Yeah, they have the... Now, pretty much every of this series all exes, and we have uh, they go to a school. Obviously, let's see a supernatural series featuring a school featuring people who fight other creatures. Sounds like Soul Eater. Yep, I like in Soul Eater where the person runs the academy is the Grim Reaper. This one's run by freaking demon named Mephisto Phyllis, who's voiced by in the dub by Sam Regal. Does a really awesome job. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, one particular person, if I can find him here. Okay, for, you also have, as I also mentioned, Shira Kagura, who basically showed up in episode 2, but revealed herself in episode 12. This smoking hot 26 year old who has basically got big breasts. Yeah, it's, it's revealed that her breasts are basically F cup. Yes, and she sleeps for like six, 8 hours a day. She's voiced by the ever awesome Wendy Lee. Yep, Wendy Lee. A few series I've heard her in. Oh yeah, this is basically the guy I want to talk about. Igor Negus, 
who's voiced by the awesome Patrick Stultz. Yep. Then we have a character who shows up in the arc, basically just finished up, who's Arthur August Angel. Yeah, the guy with uh, the guy with. Yeah, I'm surprised no one calls him Triple A. Nope, his <laughs> people call him Baldy as a nickname, which I think is so hilarious. Despite the fact he's not bald, he's voiced by David Vincent in the English dub. Mm -hmm. Yep. Now, what happens in these episodes is basically this. In the very first episode of this, now here's the thing about the the arc space, the chapters these ones are adapted from. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now I have that on here. Now the first two episodes of the series adapt the first chapter. I have no idea why in the world they did this for. They took the first chapter of the series and split it up. This is only the second series I've watched that has done this. The only other series that actually has done this is Black Clover. Yeah, this is the only series I've seen like this where they, where they actually do this. Luckily, they do think about the second episode when they did it for a little while. Yeah. In any case, the first, like, two ep the first 17 episodes, they adapt roughly around the first 15 chapters. Yep. Episode 3 adapts chapter 2. 3, uh, 4 is chapter 3. 5 is chapter 4. 6 is an, adapts basically an omake. 7 adapts 5. 7, 8, 9 basically adapts chapters 5 through 9. 10 adapts chapter 8. 11 is a filler episode. We'll talk about this one in a minute. 12 is basically adapting chapter 9. And 14, and basically, yeah, that's basically as far as I get with it. Mm hmm. Yeah, the whole thing that uh, Ren basically is this rebellious teen who lives with his adoptive father, who is a priest, mind you, a Catholic priest. I'm thinking, okay, now, I don't know if Catholic priests can do this in real life, where they can adopt children. I have no idea if they they can do that. I have no idea. And no, there's no mention these kids were altar boys. Yes, that's a stereotypical thing that's been around for the past, like, 20 years or so, where we have a Catholic priest... And people are altar boys. Controversial stuff. And the Catholic priest loves covering it up. They like pay out the damn families. Instead of sending the, the Catholic priests who are basically rapists. Not all of them anyways like this. I've heard some of them are. Instead of sending the freaking prison. Because Catholic, the Catholic church is very strict when it comes to stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Yep. And of course, well, he gets... Basically, Ring gets a fight with this fun person. Comes home. And then, well, he gets chastised by his adoptive father. I say doctor because his father is actually freaking Satan. Yeah, and Satan apparently is a god demon. Somehow. Yeah, the way they explain demons in the show is quite bizarre. Yeah. Also, the show is noteworthy for having characters quote from the Bible a lot. Yes, quote from the book, the, basically the book of John, Ecclesiastes. Yeah, where he's basically quote from memory. Mm-hmm. Yep. And they try to face up against the demon basically possessing this teenager who's around the same age as Ren. Yeah, basically he finds his demon when he's like 16. And, well, comes across the sword that he introduced back in episode 1. He doesn't see until the following episode. Yeah, after he basically runs into the rooftops with his awesome, adoptive fa his awesome adoptive father, this priest used to be a paladin later on. Yeah, they really he's a really awesome guy. Of course, he tends to call him like old, old man, old fart. Yeah, stereotypical teenage hygiene, teenage slang from the company. People are old. Also, if you watch the show in the dub, these characters have a tendency to swear a lot. Like, I think like over the course of these seventeen episodes, I heard the S word said many times in the, over the course of the series, and I heard S O B. But luck enough, like One Piece. They don't drop the F bomb. I think even Johnny on Bosch doesn't even drop the F bomb, which thank God I'm like, Viz Media actually doing swearing? Yes, I know Funimation has been doing this for the past like well, as many dubs I've seen of theirs, where they have tends to have the characters swear. Yeah, they do in one piece a lot. They do like almost every episode. They see like almost every single swear word, except for the F word, which I'm kinda glad they don't do that. Mm-hmm. Yep, so, yeah. And, of course, he gets out of the school and meets Mephisto. They actually do this a couple times when they actually have characters show up in post credit scenes. Yep. Yep. 
Yeah, they show up in post credit scenes. Yeah, Mistopheli shows up in, like, grand fashion. And yes, the guy is a freaking clown. He dresses in his... He always speaks in his high... This basically gentleman manner. He tells you when you use a web, he's like... And, of course, pretty much a lot of the stuff pretty much taken from the manga itself. Not really much change here. Like where he first meets him and basically he sends his goon to kill him. He's like, no, don't kill me. Like, or commit suicide or run away. He's like, nope, I want to become an exorcist. He's like, what? Like, he wants to... He says he wants to kick Satan's butt. <laughs> yeah, another guy says it, too. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we're taking to school. And, of course, well... By the third episode, they get introduced to the fact that, well... His brother's the teacher of the cram school. Yes, cram school. I should point out, though, this is the thing in Japan. We don't have cram schools over here. Yeah, that's something for Japan. Yep. And episode four, you get a chance to meet the love interest of the series. Shimmy! A woman with rosy cheeks. She's always blushing at Yurin. I mean, it's implied she has a thing for Yukio, but that's something for another time. Mm-hmm. Of course, if I they find a demon who's messing some some something in her garden, they defeat it pretty easily. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah. And of course, Rin has to keep his well his flames hidden. Then we have the boy from the cursed temple. Yeah, they explain some of the characters' backstory over the course of these episodes. Yeah, where they were raised basically from a a family who. Something from the Blue Knight. Yeah, they explained it in the series. Mm -hmm. Where, like, a bunch of, like, high priests were killed. And this episode is basically explaining his backstory. And he, and he also training on this, basically, these frog demons called Reapers. And, basically, Ren defeats one of them by simply just using intimidation on him. Doesn't draw a sword. He's not allowed to draw a sword. He doesn't draw a sword in front of his friends until, like, episode 15. Yep. The Phantom Ship. This is drawn from the next episode six, The Phantom Ship. Yeah, this is drawn from an OVA where they try to buy lunch and basically it's a good character episode. To figure out who's going to kill and it's Mephisto's familiar. Yep, they get to a chef fight. Chef fight. They actually feel over the course of these episodes that Rin is a fantastic cook. Yeah, first to make it think of where the main character of a series is a cook. I have never seen this before. He's actually good at cooking. He's actually the only skill aside fighting he's good at. It's a good standalone episode. Mm -hmm. Of course, they had this hilarious thing where the familiar, uh, kind of scary moment, or at least also kind of hilarious, where he tries to eat, tries to basically cook three three teenage girls. Luckily enough, he stops them in time and they have a cooking contest, and that's particularly that. Mm -hmm. Yep. And of course now a certain man who was stuck. This one is something else altogether. This one, well, is about now they mentioned it in the last episode. They have this whole boot camp thing they have of course the last couple episodes. Are they trying to get basically get familiars? That's why I get their uh, yeah, a couple of few characters get familiars. Though next episode, a couple of them turning uh one uh Echo's turning gets it briefly. Though that's because lots of comments that deserve it's another episode. I'm trying to write these episodes as quickly as I can. Basically, trying to write the best I can with these episodes. Mm -hmm. Yep, in the next episode, it's all a test, and they all passed. Yeah, and basically boot camp, they all stayed at Ren's dorm. Also, this dorm has no AC. Yep. And Ren basically folks was like, okay, this is a rich, this is a school for rich kids, and you couldn't spring from AC. And Yuki's like, well, this is an old building, so bring AC in. It's a good thing this is set in modern day because the last series I watched featured extras was set in the Victorian era. Mm -hmm. Yep, Ten basically uses Kiro, awesome cat. This one for the cat is male is voiced by a woman. Yep, voiced by a woman. Shows up a few times over the course of these episodes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, basically she's not he's not believing the fact that Shiro is dead until of course Yurin basically just walks and doesn't draw a sword, he doesn't even use the power, just Batman gets ahead, 
explains that, yep, he's dead. And, of course, becomes a familiar. Yep. Yeah, basically like a pet for them. Mm -hmm. And, of course, we have a two-parter, basically, of, well, Demon. Well, first we have a standalone episode, a fellow episode, mind you. Yeah, Ren is Lorenzo going on a mission to a, close on to a Kraken with a teacher of theirs. I should point out that a lot of the other characters, or the rest of the characters, know where to be seen. Yeah, all about basically this character pissed off a little boy. It's an okay fellow episode. Yeah, basically, boy, this this little boy wants revenge against this Kraken for possibly killing his father. Also, this boy is implied to be a pervert. And he really isn't. Like, he saves Kagero basically when she gets leg cramp, and the first thing he does is grab her breast. Heck, he even tries to mouth them out of her sense. He even comments the fact she's cute. Despite the fact she's probably about six, she's probably about, probably almost ten years older than he is. And comments the fact she's cute. <laughs> she's blessed a few times, of course. She's basically sort of a stuck-up girl. She's got, like, the, the typical rich girl. Mm -hmm. Then we have, well, a character named Aimon shows up to play Tag. Also, prior to this, he had been sightseeing over Japan. And his brother, basically, Mephisto, was not very happy about this. Until it comes across the Komodo he really wanted. And he's like, oh, you're a fantastic brother. Thank you for this. <laughs> and so they play with him in the music park, which was his. Well, basically his music park. And the place gets freaking wrecked when Rin basically goes freaking nuts. Though, lucky enough that they don't see him in the particular moment. But <laughs> And of course, while they reveal that the, the student basically spent a lot of time playing her PSP. Well, is is an actually is a senior exorcist. Is he team or she's actually like twenty six? Yep. And basically, next episode reviews sort of a backstory, and then she becomes a teacher. And then she sees, oh yeah, I'm eighteen. And of course, next episode when they go camping, it's like okay, okay. She tells us she's eighteen. It's like nope, she's actually twenty. She's about to tell twenty six, and he, she hits with a can. And of course, she's drunk. Yes, yeah, she's drunk for like a couple episodes. It's so hilarious. And of course, they also have the they also have the boot camp where they have to go and retrieve this lantern. Too pretty easily because usually some um some genius work. Almost all the guys except for one find the lantern and get there pretty easily. And then basically they all transport it. And of course, well, Ren basically like an idiot accidentally a giant moth who looks like a small Mothra. Yep. Of course, Yukio basically takes out pretty. It takes it takes a little while to take it out, but then of course, Aimon shows up again for a rematch. Has apparently put a larva in Shuru's neck at some point when he wishes he was crossing the river, and well, he fights him. This one, he reveals to him that well, he has demonic powers. A lot of them are upset with this now. Shuru has no problem with this at all. Apparently, it's impl she implied that she knew all along. And probably because the reason why she trusts him is because of, of his kindness that he has to. That's why I think he's hit her once in her debut episode. He at least treats her with, with respect, despite the fact he's been in love with her since the first, the first time they met. Though, like I said, she thinks she has thing for her, his brother, but that is something for later on when I talk about the current arc of the manga. And, let's see. Then they're taken to the Vatican, of course, is when uh, the Paladin shows up. The Paladin is the top person in the Order. And they take it straight to the Vatican, although um, Maristopheles. But in this case, yeah, I want to use a little before guess the order. Iamon shows up, cause ruckus. Of course, they also get also he had previous battle with Iamon. The sword got damaged, so got it fixed. Yeah, took it to a sword to who was a childhood friend of said of. I'm trying to think, what was his name? That's where I think his name is. Uh, Renju. Yeah, yeah, childhood friend of his. A gets a fix, no problem, but they couldn't exactly do the ritual, but at least the storage was stored. Yep. And of course, then, then the one person who actually has doubts gives us demon, and that's where they ended there. Yeah, I know I kind of rushed through a lot of this stuff for these first, uh, first 17 episodes, but this is definitely a good series. I'm definitely looking forward to doing the rest of the series. The next one's only 18, 8 episodes, not like 17. Okay. But until you see the next review, now the next review is a comic corner, okay? By the way, soon, okay? See you, see you there. Bye.